All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Judah Goes First podcast. My name is Dalton Harper. I'm the host of this podcast. And with me today is Travis Manansky. This is his first time on the podcast. He's the youth director here at the church. Man, how are you? I'm good, brother. I'm, I'm good. How are you? Um, uh, extravagant, man. I've been really excited about this episode. I have to. I'm Let's, uh, let's, let's bust some bubbles. Yeah, I'm <laughs> really excited about it. So uh, we just want to welcome you guys. Thank you guys for joining us uh, on another episode. I hope you guys are enjoying the episode, and we want to hear your feedback on this. So drop something in the comments. Let us know some topics that you would like to hear, and uh, just compliment something. If there's something sticks out to you, uh, throw, hey, I like this part in the comments. Uh, we want to hear from you guys. So, uh, so with today, this episode was so kind of not out of the blue. Dad's episode was really out of the blue. It was in my kitchen. But this one, it was, uh, gosh, probably, what, a month ago? Yeah, uh, about a month ago. I was up in my office, and Travis just started sharing his testimony, uh, kind of his story with me. And I was like, you got to (laughs) stop. And I instantly pulled out my calendar, and I was like, you got to be on the podcast, man. So I'm really, really excited about this. And a lot of people, like, this story... Uh, not to make your head big, but this story is the reason why this podcast exists. Is because, like, when you started telling me your story, which we're going to get into, uh, I would have never guessed uh, that you yeah. that you went through that. And you know, people need to know that this stuff is real. Um, so, to kind of make a foundation, one of the things I want to hit before we get into his story is what you're about to hear is so real, and I feel like the church avoids it. Yeah, avoids yeah. the reality that uh, that at the same time, because I mean, I would say we're non-denominational, but I would say we're geared Pentecostal pretty pretty hard. We believe in the gifts, and you know, we're we're pretty loud in our praise and stuff like that. Yeah, so, yeah. I believe that the that uh, that the part of the church believes so much in the glory of the Lord that it's almost like we become blinded by the darkness of the enemy. Yeah, or they feel like if if they talk about it or, or give it attention, then they're glorifying it. Yes. And, I mean, anything that we talk about today, it's not meant to be glorifying yes. the, uh, the yes. demonic or the dark aspects of things, because it's ultimately God that brought me out of that place. Yeah. You know, it's and, and to give something attention, it's... I think I told you the other day, but it's like going into a boxing match blindfolded. Mm-hmm. You're just not going to see when you get hit. Like, if we don't bring attention to these things... They're not going to realize how susceptible to it they actually are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in this episode, we're going to hit a lot, because I love that you said that we're not glorifying the subject. I love that. We're going to hit a lot on witchcraft and demons and um, the darkness of the world. We're going to hit a lot on that, but I want you guys to stay until the end, because the ending does not end dark. <laughs> Right, okay, hear right, me. It doesn't end right. dark. This is all for the glory of the Lord. And honestly, this stuff does need to be noticed. I, I mean, not that it needs to be studied necessarily, but it does need to be talked about. And the reality of of it does does need to be talked about by the church because it's a very real thing. And we need to know how to help people who are and minister to people who are in it. Yeah. And if we know nothing about it, how are we supposed to minister to the people that are in it? That's true. Uh, so, yeah, I'm excited, man. So let's just dig into it. Um, all right. Travis, where did you grow up? Are are you from Fairmont? I am indeed from Fairmont. So like you, I was born, I was born in a small town in Ohio, but I moved okay. here when I was like three or four years old. So like my whole life, I've basically been here. Um, mm. And then what is it, eighteen, nineteen? You know, I thought I could figure stuff out on my own, so I moved yeah, yeah. back up to Ohio to be with that part of my family. Okay, what part uh, of Ohio? It's a little town called Cheshire. Cheshire. Yeah. I don't think I've ever heard so, of that. So there's Cheshire and then there's Gallipolis, which okay. is right across the river from a little place called Point Pleasant. Yeah, I yeah. know Point Pleasant. Yeah, right yeah. across the river. Yeah, Mothman. Yeah, yeah. Mothman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So uh, growing up for you, because being you know in Fairmont, Fairmont, me and Mac on the episode that we talked about being back home, up here is totally different than back home. So mm-hmm. I'm just kind of interested – for you growing up here, was that hard? Or was that, like, what was your life like growing up? I mean, I'd like to say it was pretty normal. I mean, yeah. I grew up with a single mom, so okay. it was a lot of my grandparents 
babysitting me while mom was at work. Like I can remember getting up real early in the morning because yeah. my mom was a manager at like a McDonald's when I was real young. So yeah. she would go and open up the store mm. um, and then I would just be like in a sleeping bag brought to my grandparents' house and like I would just spend the day at my grandparents'. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So at some point mm-hmm. you met Sarah. Which, yeah. if you don't know, Sarah Manansky is Travis's wife. Uh, they both run the youth upstairs currently, so yep. uh, which is awesome. Congratulations again to you guys. It's <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, we share the same office, which is awesome. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, but at what point did did you guys meet? Um, we met. I want to say it was like 2018, 2019. Um, I was managing a gas station here in town, and her dad was actually my boss. Oh, <clears throat> yeah. Man. So there for a while, I was dating the boss's daughter, which is dangerous. <laughs> um, That's awesome. What I didn't know is that, I guess before we had met, yeah. she went to see a psychic, and the psychic told her that she was going to meet a man with long brown hair in a brick building. The gas station I managed is a brick building. Oh, that's weird. So, wait a minute. So Sarah kind of opened the door to that. Did she? Was she the first to get involved in witchcraft? No, I was. You know, <laughs> I was already involved in it at the time, which okay. I think is why the psychic knew who and where. So there was, I was already a connection. Deep kind calls of. out to deep. Spirit yeah. knows spirit, right? Oh man. Um, she was more into what I refer to as like the new age thing. So, like astrology, zodiac signs, numerology. Oh yeah, yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we're already in it, so we might as well just go ahead and... So wait, before we go ahead and, into the witchcraft stuff. Mm-hmm. So she goes to a psychic. Mm-hmm. Psychic kind of, without saying your name, tells her about you. Mm-hmm. So, oh my gosh, that's so weird that it was the boss's daughter. So y'all had already met during this time? Um, Very briefly, I saw her at a like company Christmas party. Yeah. And my manager at the time, I just kind of looked at her and was like, she's cute. Like, I want that. <laughs> she's like, that's the boss's daughter. I'm like, I don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then it was the whole like, I'm checking her out. She's checking me out. We didn't actually meet face to face until I got the management position at that store because my manager had left. Yeah. And I just kind of took over that position. And she was making food uh, for the company out of that store. Yeah. So... I had to like order her supplies for her, so that kind of like opened the door to the conversation. Yeah, um, and I was just like, "Hey, let me get your number." Yeah, <laughs> that's how it goes, man. That's how it goes. So, uh, with the the psychic mm-hmm. telling her that, did she put two and two together kind of immediately, or was it? No, it wasn't until I think we were just sitting down talking one day, and she was just like, "Whoa!" It just hit her. Yeah. Uh, I I, I got to make a point here. It's so funny that y'all. You know, not only just being, you know, the boss's daughter, but also connecting the two with a psychic. That mm-hmm. is proof of the of scripture that what the enemy meant for evil, God would turn for good. Yeah, dude, like, that's that's our that's almost like our whole story together. Is like oh, we've we've been through a lot. Yeah, um, and a lot of it could have easily torn us apart, torn us. I mean killed us both physically and spiritually but yeah. what the enemy meant for evil god will use for good yeah that's powerful that's powerful so at what point because you said that you were kind of already in witchcraft mm-hmm. before you two had met or anything like that uh what point was it introduced to you and you started getting involved in it so i'll say introduced as in like the first time i kind of became aware of it yeah. like saw it uh, yeah. experienced it whatever um was honestly in movies, Mm. stuff like Harry Potter, video games that those, those games and movies and things almost glorify it to an extent because it's like this almighty source of power. Right. And at first I didn't really think anything of it because they do a really good job of making it seem like it's just in the movies. It's not real. Mm. Um, and then when I was in Ohio, um, when I was like 18, 19 and I moved back to Ohio, um, was actually in the public library. They had a whole like occult demonology section. So I would just go to the public library, check out some books, and be like, mm. hmm, I want to try that. 
Mm. Yeah. They have a lot of stuff like that. Like, I was in Books a Million the other day and was just looking around, and, dude, they have a whole section yeah. devoted to that. Yeah. Uh, I don't I mean, know they if... literally sell, like, spell books at Spencer's. Oh, that's nuts. I think Barnes & Noble does, too. Yeah. Uh, which I haven't looked in there, but... Yeah. Uh, been in there a couple times and never, you know, wandered that far. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, dude, it's everywhere, and it's very uh, bluntly put out there. I know my my grandma, um, she said that they used to, when Ouija boards first came out, it was just like another board game. And Yeah, well, now they, it's, they still try to mask it, like, to this day. Yeah, yeah. So... You can look it up on your own time if you if you feel the need to. Yeah. But they've renamed a Ouija board, and it's now called the Holy Spirit board, and it allows what? you to talk directly to Jesus. What? Yeah. I did not know that yeah. existed. And it's like we don't need a a, a Ouija board to talk to Jesus. Oh That's what prayer does. Oh my gosh. Or even things like tarot cards. Yeah, yeah. They've renamed them angel cards. Like they try to pass it off as you know the the enemy masquerades as a as a being of light, and they've tried to pass it off as like, well, you can still do this because it's Christian now. Yeah. Nah, nah, you can't. Like it's the it's the same thing, but with I mean the the enemy's trick has always been deception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's the same same trick, dude. That is the importance of discernment. Good Lord, man. Yeah. I saw uh, not to get on a rabbit trail, but I saw, gosh, probably. It's been a year ago where they came out with like a bottle of liquor that was called like the Holy Spirit or something like that. So, but I had no idea about mm-hmm. the, like the Ouija board, the Holy Spirit board is what they called it. Yeah, they have. It's like Jeez. the the whole thing that you put your hands on. Yeah, yeah, is in the shape of a cross. Dude, what? That is so blasphemous. Good yeah. lord, man. Oh yeah, the the whole advertisement for it is blasphemous. <sighs> it's 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 disgusting. It'll make your stomach hurt. <laughs> Dude, I don't even know how to move on from that. I'm just like <laughs> flabbergasted. That's the end of the episode, everybody. You know? <laughs> Good Lord, man. Okay. So, geez. Okay. So what form, because you said that Sarah was in like the more new age. Mm-hmm. Um, when, did she do like crystals, stuff like that? I know like no, rocks it was, and stuff. Was, it was literally like she would look at how like numbers mean things. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know how they say angel numbers on like the clock if it's 1111? Yeah. Um, to her, repeating numbers of any kind were like, they, they all represented something. Yeah. Something was in alignment. Yeah. In numerology, even 666 is a good thing. Yeah. Which, I mean, in scripture, it says that that's the number of the beast. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, with her being in that, like what kind of witchcraft were you more, you know, Gravitating kind of towards hard, it's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly because I I kind of like dabbled in a little bit of like different stuff. Yeah, I mean, I didn't variety. do the whole I didn't do the whole animal sacrifices or like <laughs> cutting myself or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't in that deep, but I would uh, like I did astral projection. Yeah, I was all about like balancing my chakras. Um, mm. Which there's that whole belief is like there's different points on your body, mm-hmm. and if they're out of balance, like if you have stomach issues, it's because you're your stomach chakra is too strong. Like if your throat hurts, like your your throat chakra is closed off. It's nutty. Um, Jeez. But yeah, like the chakras, the astral projection. Yeah. Um, looking back on it, I had even made altars. Like I had, uh, it was this old stand that I had a knife in. Yeah. And I'm going to describe it and you're going to be able to just to tell how like evil it actually was. Mm. But the stand itself was two skeletons facing apart from each other. Mm -hmm. And I had just molded this wax candle thing in the middle of it. And I would drink, I would smoke, and I would light the candle and just kind of like focus myself. Mm. So like you mentioned, the the liquor called Holy Spirit. Yeah. There's a reason why alcohol and liquor is called spirits. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Yeah. And, And... any any time that um, alcohol or drug use is is used in that capacity, it lowers your your spirit, man, to allow other things to come through. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, did anybody know that you were getting into this at this time, or was it pretty like secretive, it was um, just in your own? At the time, one cousin did, okay, because uh, he had stayed with me at my dad's house at the time, and. I think he was just more genuinely curious. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I would tell him stuff. And I can remember there was one night where uh, 
we were getting ready to go to bed, and I'm like, listen, tonight, like, I'm going to go to bed, mm-hmm. I'm going to project, I'm going to move stuff around. <laughs> and when you wake up tomorrow morning, like, stuff's going to be moved around. And at first, he was like, oh, whatever, like, it's not real. Yeah. It's in movies. Yeah. And then he woke up, and I had moved stuff around. Ooh. Yeah. That's gross. <laughs> okay. So, because you're already kind of on the on the stories, I want you to tell, like, kind of the stories, different stuff that you experienced. Because uh, you told me, like, which I don't want to overstep or anything, but you told me, like, the... Free range. Um, um, that you were dealing with lust at one point, and you had woke up in the middle of the night or something, and there was a portal to hell beside your bed or something like that. Yeah, so this was... <sighs> Before I had actually gotten into all of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I would have these, like, what's the word? Like, sleep paralysis type dreams. Like, I would I would be conscious that I was dreaming, but I could not do anything to wake myself up or to get myself out of seeing what I was seeing. Yeah. And so I was having that same experience one night, and I was conscious of the the fact that, like, I'm dreaming, I can't get out of this, or if like I'm awake, then I'm still seeing what I'm dreaming. Mm. And I look down over the edge of my bed, and there's just this hole. And there are literal like demons and spirits just crawling out of that hole. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, yeah, you mentioned that one. I'm trying to think of a couple more that you mentioned. Um which, oh, this one. Okay, so this one's kind of freaked me out. Okay. Um, you had, if I remember right, you had projected mm-hmm. and spoke something into a girl's ear while she was sleeping or something. Oh, yeah. Um, so I was very narcissistic, full of myself. I was cocky. Yeah, yeah. Um, because this whole witchcraft endeavor was about me trying to seek control over my life for myself. I wanted to have the power to do the things I wanted. Mm. And if there was a girl that I was attracted to, I would make it a point to wait till the end of the day, project, and when you do it, it's almost like you, the way that I was, like I kind of taught myself, the way that I read in the books and stuff was you, Imagine your your yourself, um, and then like you have an outline, mm. and you push that outline out. Yeah, like yeah. you're you're literally forcing your spirit out of your body. Yeah, um, and then it's it's envisioning things. So like I would envision that girl asleep on her bed, and my spirit person would go and speak to her, and I would tell her what I wanted her, you know. Like you're you're attracted to me. You you want me. You're gonna you're gonna text me or message me or call me here in a couple of days. You're gonna see me and you're gonna want my number. Dude, in their sleep. Oh, mm. that's nuts. And then within the next couple of days, it'd be like bling, notification on my phone. Oh my god. Hey, I had a dream about you the other night. I'm like, <laughs> really? Yeah. And I I wanna I wanna state too because there's probably you know for the people who doesn't know or knows that it exists but doesn't really understand that it exists you're probably wondering well where is all this in scripture john was called to the heavens paul was called to the third heaven so there is a form where the lord will call your spirit out of your body to experience yeah. certain things but i think there's that form of witchcraft where you can actually force it yeah in um, those in those moments in scripture god is is literally holding their spirit in his hand like he is yeah he yeah. is protecting them mm. when you do it in witchcraft you are unprotected there are instances oh, yeah. in witchcraft in which people have astral projected like that and died because something else comes into their body first. Oh, wow. So it's almost like a form of like possession or something? Yeah, like your your spirit leaves your body, and if you don't get back to it, you're done. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Okay. So was there ever a moment, uh, you know, because he was talking about going like unprotected. Was there ever a moment that you astral projected and there was like other demons in the room with you that would talk to you or anything like that? I don't remember a time when any of them talked to me specifically, yeah. but I know they noticed me. So they knew that you were. Yeah, but I, 
when I would like from what I had read and what I had studied, it was all about if you put yourself out there as like this big strong like you know you don't want to mess with me because I have this power yeah yeah they're not going to there I mean there's other people who have been in witchcraft I heard this story not too long ago this girl was talking about how she was in witchcraft and her roommate was a Christian and there was one night where uh, her roommate was like freaking out panic attack because she saw this pause okay <laughs> that's the video that I was gonna play <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> Yeah, I'm, let's just go ahead and play it real okay, quick. Uh, so to give you context, her name is Ashley Jones. Okay, so she was a former witch. I think this is the same video. I hope it is. That is so cool. <laughs> so uh, her name's Ashley Jones. Her, uh, she was a former witch, and her grandma uh, would speak like word curses over her. Yeah, same, I think it's the same. Yeah, video. it's the same thing. Uh, she would, and her grandma would speak word curses over her and tell her that she has a power on the inside of her, and she was mm-hmm. born to be like a witch. And uh, she went through a bad relationship, uh, really toxic, and ended up, um, I think it was around 15 that she said that she ended up uh, becoming a witch, got her first spell book. And uh, so, yeah, she was living with the roommate. Mm -hmm. Um, The roommate was a Christian. Dude, this is the same video. I, daggone it, you read my mind, man. That's um, just how the Lord works. That's right. right. <sighs> Lift your hands, you know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, her roommate was a Christian, and she had like a box in her living room full of like witchcraft stuff. Everything that you could think that a witch would need, she had um, had it all over the place. The roommate knew that she did that stuff, mm-hmm. uh, which is crazy to me that she's a Christian knew that. Not bashing the thing. Well, but it might come from the, they don't talk about the reality of it. Oh, that's true, man. That's true. So, yeah. So, Ashley would wake up almost every night, 3 a.m., uh, which mocks the Trinity. You it's know? the witching hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I just want to play this video uh, because I, w- I want you to actually talk about this. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is nuts. And so there was one night that I woke up, 3 a.m. Not unusual it for me. Like I said, this happens every night, and I was having a panic attack. And I was so used to it at this point that I was just kind of sitting there. I learned to just sit in it and, you know, there was nothing I could do but just sit in it and work through it. Um, And my phone rang and I was like, what the heck is going on? My roommate's calling me. Now, like I said, it's typical for me to be awake, but for her to be awake is very unusual. So I answer the phone and I'm like, what are you doing awake? And she said, you need to come in here right now. I'm like, are you good? Are we good? What's going on? Why? Why are you awake? Why do you need me to come into your room? She said, I need you to come in here right now. There is somebody in my room. And so I'm like, there's somebody in your room, in my house. You're calling me on the phone. What? What is going on? Like, I was so confused. I'm like, this just doesn't make sense. You're calling me. There's somebody standing in your room. What is going on? So I'm like sprinting to her room. Like, having a panic attack already i'm panicked i am like full of anxiety i'm full of fear i am literally drenched in demonic spirits and i'm running to her room as soon as i open the door i remember seeing her face and i will never be able to unsee it i will never forget what it looked like i had never seen her face that pale i had never seen her look so terrified in her life and i had never seen somebody look at me as if i were not standing there and they were just looking right through me As soon as I walked in the door and she saw me, her head went like this. She told me that the man that was standing in her room, the demon that was standing in her room, fled when I walked in the room. When I cracked the door open and she saw me, she saw the demon go from one part of her room out the window on the other side of the room. I asked God why this was later on in my walk and the thing that he told me shook me to my core. I said, God, why did that happen? all those years ago I remember being in that room and I remember her being so terrified and the look that she gave me and then the demon just left like why did that happen and he told me that demon no longer needed to be in her room when you entered it and if that doesn't show you what kind of demonic spirits were attached to me what kind of spiritual authority the demonic spirits that were on me had that demonic spirit that was in her room didn't need to be there if I was there Dude, what the yeah. heck, man? Yeah. yeah, I want you to just elaborate on that because I, I I can't believe you said the same video. That's nuts. I mean, that's just that's how it works sometimes. Yeah. But it's so for me, like what I was taught is what you like the energy you put out. Yeah. Right. It's all about energies and vibes and all that kind of thing. But if I put out that I'm stronger than you and yeah. I I firmly believed it. So just like in in Christianity, without 
firmly knowing your identity in Christ, yeah. you have no authority in Christ. Jeez, man. Yeah. I was firmly aware of my identity in the darkness yeah. that I had authority there. Mm. And if I said, you don't want to mess with me, you don't, like, you wouldn't, they wouldn't do it. Yeah. Because I just put it out there that, like, I'm, I might look like a human, but I am something else entirely. So even though, like, you're in association with them in a way, they still were submissive? Because of what was on me was stronger than they were. That's crazy. That's yeah. crazy. So this is a l- strong reach, man, but I, I've... Uh, I just want to get your thoughts on it. Mm. Um, in the same way that anointing can happen in a church over a worship leader, over a pastor, um, that anointing, that, that you know, authority that you can carry through, uh, of course, the mm-hmm. Lord, uh, do you think that that same anointing happens but in a darker level? Yeah. There's even um, so there's a guy named John Ramirez. Yeah. I'm sure some people have heard of him. Yep. Used to be a satanic priest. Yep. There's there is a dark anointing, just like like every everything that God has for His people, mm-hmm. the enemy has a perversion of that. Yeah. So God's prophetic mm-hmm. are Satan's psychics and mediums. Mm. Wow. If, if God has a preacher preaching the gospel and the good news, mm-hmm. there is also a a preacher of the demonic. Yeah. Spreading their message. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Not to, to really, because I do want to, this video, man, that video shook me because I ended up seeing that mm-hmm. uh, right after we talked. It was so weird, man. Um, but she, with her going into the room, because I know you talked about the authority of that. Do you think that the demon fling was like afraid of her or do you think that it was a... Eh, my my position here is done. Kind it could thing. have been a little bit of both. Yeah, I do think it could have been could yeah. have been a bit of both, um, because witches and warlocks tend to manipulate that power. Yeah, right. Yeah. We we take it and we use it. Yeah. Um, so the fact that she was in it so much, mm-hmm. she had she had that much power and that much authority that. He could have been afraid of it. If I stay here, she could, she could do something to me. Yeah. Or it could have also been my positions filled. Like I don't need to be here if you're here. You know, like the the <sighs> next shift showed up. I'm. It's yeah, covered. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. So I I didn't play all of the video. If you want to go um, see the full video, if you look up on, I think because I saw that one on TikTok. Uh, if you go to TikTok, it's Ashley Jones. You can go watch the whole thing. Uh, but I picked apart that. But she ends up telling, like, um, after that had happened, the roommate had called, like, a, a family or a friend or something mm-hmm. that was also a Christian. And apparently they were spirit-filled, man. And they came in with Bibles and anointing oil and read, like, Psalms 91 over the house in every mm-hmm. corner and was was just demanding that every demon that had a stronghold in the house would leave. And uh, she said that that was the turning point for her to where she realized that demons were um, afraid of the name of Jesus and afraid of that authority. And, um, but she ended up, I mean, you had to go watch it. She ended up getting back into witchcraft again. And like, she has this whole, that her testimony's nuts, man. I mean, I also was. Yeah. In yeah. In and out, in and out, which I want to get to. So, but with her, with that being the turning point for her, what was the moment that you were like, man, Jesus is like strong, like God is greater kind of thing. So in the middle of me practicing all this in my literal darkest place. Yeah. The enemy tried to kill me. Okay. Um, so I was drinking heavily. Yeah. I, you could probably consider me an alcoholic at that point in time. Mm-hmm. Um, smoking weed, doing drugs every day. Like I, I had literally stayed high like all day long. Mm-hmm. And I was out riding four wheelers with some friends and family. Mm-hmm. And I flipped it. Mm-hmm. And it came back down on top of me and it Fractured my skull, broke my neck and my back. Wow. I should not be standing. Yeah. I should be in a wheelchair. I should be dead. I should be anything but here (laughs) right now. And it was at that point that I realized, like, God's always going to look out for me. Yeah, yeah. Like, his hand literally protected me. Yeah. 
that's how much stronger he is that when the enemy tries to pull the rug out from my feet, mm. he's going to catch me. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. So I want you to talk about, because this is a moment where you kind of started, was this when you tried to start coming back to church and mm-hmm. stuff like that? So I want to talk, I want you to talk about the incident of like pulling into a church parking lot. Okay. Uh, so that was before all that happened. Before, yeah, before you say this, I want to point out what she said that that she was totally drenched in spirits. Mm -hmm. So did you know that you were like that deep into it to where what you're about to tell was happening? No, this was kind of one of those moments where like after it happened, I was like, man, what is wrong with me? Like, yeah, yeah. You can go ahead and tell the story though. So So people know what you're talking about. (laughs) I was working for a car dealership at the time. Yeah. I was detailing cars, like just washing cars. Mm. And the owner of the dealership had asked me if I would go run, like, some sort of food drive or, or something. Like, it was some sort of charity event thing yeah. um, on his behalf. Sure, why not? Like, I'm still going to get paid to do it, and I'm not sitting out here washing cars, baking in the sun all day. Yeah, yeah. No problem, guy. Yeah. However, I did not know where I was going. He didn't tell me what the place was. He just gave me the address. So this wasn't even, like, a, a church service. This was for a job? It what? was for like a almost like a fellowship kind oh, of thing. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, like they they were getting together to like soup opera type thing, like serve food and yeah. Oh, that's okay. But it was at a church. Yeah, I yeah, was yeah. not aware of that at the time. Yeah, that it was at a church. Um, so he gives me the address. I type it into my phone. I'm just following the address, and uh, look down at my phone. It says I'm here. Put it in park, and I look up from my phone, and I'm in a church parking lot, mm. and I cannot get out of the car. And the, this is where it gets... So this is like a physical, like, you can't get out of the car. Not that you didn't, like, want to, but right. it was just a, like, your body would not let you get out of the car. Right. I'm, oh, my gosh. And I'm, like, I'm I'm squirming. I'm, like, bawling. And I'm yeah. screaming, we don't want to. Oh, jeez. We okay. can't. We don't like this. And I'm, like, I'm literally, like... Yeah, people would have, people yeah. would have thought I was having a seizure in this car because I'm just like contorting and twisting and screaming and crying. Yeah, yeah. And I pull away. Like I'm like I'm I'm. We are getting out of here. Like it was. I was speaking uh, in plurals the whole time. Yeah. Um. So I'm. I go back and I go back to the dealership and I'm still like crying. I'm sweating. Like yeah, I'm, yeah. And and my dad at the time he's like, "What's what's the matter with you?" I'm like, "I we can't do it." Mm. we can't do it because it's not just... So this is still like manifesting even though you left. Yes, yes. And and even the boss comes out and he's like, what's wrong with this boy? He's like, I don't know. And the boss ah. tried to fire me, but I mean, if you want to get legal and technical about it, you can't fire me because I don't want to go into a church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. So I just got sent home for the day. Mm. And after I, I got home and I like cooled off and relaxed, and I'm like, what was that? Like, why couldn't I walk into the, like, I couldn't even get out of my car and walk towards the church. Yeah. Oh, geez, man. Yeah. So with the continued manifestation that was happening, excuse me, um, do you think that it was like, because I, I just find it so strange that it continued when you left the church, do you think that it was almost like pulling into the church? I want to say like a picture of the glory of the Lord that was entering that. So they went into full torment. And then when you pulled out, it kind of followed and stuck around. Or do you think that they were just so angry that it just, they continued? were angry. Like it, when I was in the parking lot, in the car torment. And oh. I mean, for, for those that have like older siblings yeah, yeah. and they would, pick on you and pick on you and pick on you, torment you. So it was like that? Yes. It was like... Oh, wow. Yeah. And it is, that's the only thing I can physically relate it to is it's yeah. like being picked on for so long that you're just mad for the rest of the day at them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Like they were, they were angry at me that I had put them through that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jeez, man. Okay. So what was your... After coming out of that... Um, did you you went back into witchcraft like this was like a back and forth kind of thing or was it like you were officially like I need deliverance from this? Um, it was kind of back and forth, but I considered myself more spiritual. I didn't want to be like mm. after my after my wreck. 
I was completely sold out for Jesus. Like, what I was doing was wrong. Yeah, yeah. And I can remember coming to the... This church, right? Like this. This has always been my home church. I've always come to Covenant. Yeah. Um, I can remember coming on a Sunday morning in my back brace, and I can't even remember what the altar call was, but I like ran up to the mm. front and just hit my knees, and I just kept saying, "I'm sorry. I'm so sorry." Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, that's all I could say. Yeah, is yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Tears in my eyes. Like I'm. I'm sorry. Forgive me, please. Like, I'm begging for forgiveness, knowing that I didn't have to beg for forgiveness, but that's where I felt like I was at. I get it. Um, And, I mean, for the longest time, I I was completely sold out. Mm. Um, I was going to go to a Bible college. Like, I had bought myself a purity ring because I was trying to renew myself. Because when I was in witchcraft, it's all about rebellion, right? Yeah, yeah. So the the more I slept around, the more rebellious I was. Like I, I did a bunch of stuff that you shouldn't be doing. Yeah. Um. So I was trying to put those blocks in place to to set myself apart. Yeah. Um. Because it had been said over me almost my entire life that like I'm meant to be in ministry. Like God's going to put me in ministry. God's going to make me a, a preacher. Or, yeah, yeah. You know that kind of thing, and. So I'm like, well, if I'm if I'm gonna do the thing, then like let's really do the thing. Mm-hmm. And eventually I had gotten into a relationship a bit too soon, if I if I might add. Mm-hmm. Um, and I began to get frustrated because I felt like I wasn't hearing God like I used to. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, me and this girl started sleeping together. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I wasn't hearing him because I was still being rebellious, mm. right? Like I can't indulge in premarital sex and then still try to consider myself set apart. Mm-hmm. Um, and then eventually we broke up and I was like, well, I'm just going to go buy a big old bag of weed. I'm going to get drunk tonight. Like I'm going over to my friend's house and we're going to have a bonfire. Yeah. And I kind of slowly slipped back into it. I didn't do the whole astral projecting thing because... It had honestly kind of freaked me out. Yeah. But I still identified myself with demonic spirits. Mm. Like I would I would tell people that like I'm I'm an incubus. Like I'm yeah. Wow. You can you could ask my wife the first time we met, that is what I told her. And at first she's like, whatever, like you're just weird. <laughs> It's but like I, Sarah had, I had you know? firmly like that was my identity. You know what I mean? Like I am a sexual demon. That was my identity in that. Oh my gosh, that is nuts. Yeah. Oh man, I don't want to get on that rabbit trail, but <laughs> it's so hard not to, man. So yeah, I'm gonna do it anyways. So with these people, we're gonna get canceled, dude. After this, <laughs> with these people that. And I say this with love, man, because yeah. I I'm, I know that people do genuinely struggle with it. I, I've never, and, and, you know, by the blood of Jesus, will never struggle with it. But for the people who do struggle with, like, the, you know, opposite gender, like, identifying as that, and the people who, you know, identify as animals mm-hmm. and all these things, are they, do you believe that these are attached to spirits as well? They can be. Yeah. Um. Not every mental illness is a a demonic spirit. Okay. But spirits can manifest themselves that yeah. way. So it's it's it takes a lot of discernment. It takes a lot of real serious discernment. Yeah. Um just like the uh the story where um the boy in the Bible would have seizures and throw himself into the fire, throw himself into water. Yeah. Um some some of the the people that that have studied that believe that that boy was possibly autistic at the time. Oh wow! And, and that's what would cause him to like have fits and throw himself into fire and throw himself into seizures. Yeah, and and into the water. And once he was prayed for and delivered from that, that whole situation stopped. Mm. So it it takes a lot of real serious discernment because not every. Illness is a spirit, but every spirit exactly. can manifest as an illness. Yeah, yeah. And I say all that not to, 
you know, gossip about that community because that's not that's right. not my goal at all. I say this on behalf of the church for the people who do come in and want deliverance from that. Of is this like a counseling, like they need a healing process, or is this deliverance? And I agree that it does, you know, come with the discernment uh, from that because I know that like, man, trauma can do a lot, and for the people that are dealing with childhood trauma, whether it be sexual abuse or, uh, you know, sickness, uh, mm-hmm. any form of trauma can, man, if you don't, if you don't guide it can, can bring a spirit. It can open a door to a spirit. Um, luckily for myself, um, which I mentioned, I think a couple episodes, no, both episodes, I think, uh, with cancer, you know, that was super traumatic for myself. And luckily I was already, um, deep relationship with the Holy spirit. So Mm -hmm. I just got mad for those couple weeks and then, you know, leaned to him more, but for the people who have no knowledge of the spirit, when they go through that trauma, um, I feel like, you know, you run to the nearest thing that can give you some form of hope and so my question, not to go on a rap trail with that, my question for you would be, was that the case for you? Like something traumatic that brought you to like, hey, I need I need something. Much like the girl in the video, it was a toxic relationship that like had mm. put me on this whole spiral of like, I need some semblance of control. Yeah. Um, where I felt like I had lost all control. Yeah. And one of the reasons why... I think people run to a source like witchcraft and new ages because it's about you mm. getting the control. Yeah. Whereas a relationship with Christ is about giving him the control. Yeah. It's it's the two total opposite things. I don't have to surrender in witchcraft, but when I come to Jesus, I have to give him my everything. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So to kind of move on a little bit. Mm-hmm. What was your first like strong encounter with the Lord? Because uh, mine, I, yours was probably totally different. So I grew up in church. Mm-hmm. I've always like Spiritfield Church. Have mm-hmm. always. I've never really dealt with anything. Uh, no, I take that back. I've dealt with some demonic stuff, but not like personally. I've just seen it in action. Mm-hmm. Um, so my first like strong encounter with the Lord, I was nine and was filled with the Spirit, and it was like I didn't ask for it, man. It was just laying at the altar and was just weeping before the Lord and he filled me up just because he wanted to. But for you, like like trying to come out of witchcraft and stuff like that, what was the first strong encounter besides, I know that the encounter with like the demons in the church mm-hmm. parking lot as a whole, that's an encounter, dude. Yeah. But like, what was the one where the Lord like really just like grabbed you and like let you know who, who he is? I feel like he's given me a lot of, there's a lot of encounters. Yeah. Um, one of the first ones I can remember, and this was before the whole witchcraft thing even started, way before. Really? Like I was, because I, I grew up in church as well. Yeah, yeah. Like I've, I've always, like I've, I think I've literally always come to Covenant Church, like my entire life. Yeah. And you were in, you were in, before Pastor Josh was pastor here, you yeah. were in his youth group. Yeah. And he was youth pastor, man, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know? You should be sorry for him. I gave him all the trouble. <laughs> and he kicked you off a, a bus one time or something, didn't he? No, that was a, there was a missions trip where I had, I had caused a bunch of ruckus. <laughs> and uh, he had actually called my mom and was like, if you don't come pick this kid up right now, oh like, my gosh. he might not make it home. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Okay. Sorry. I just had to, <laughs> had to do yeah. that. Um, but yeah, tell us about that time, man. So... I couldn't even tell you how old I was. Mm. Um, I just remember I was I was young, like elementary school age. So I could have been seven, eight, nine, somewhere yeah, in so that you range. You were really young. Yeah, yeah. And it was my first time ever at a church camp. Okay. And I can just remember this worship service that they were having, and I'm just you know bawling my eyes out, and I'm pretty sure I fell out in the spirit because mm. I okay. don't like. I'm just missing a gap in time. Yeah, yeah. And then I come back to and people were like, dude, you were saying all kinds of crazy stuff. Like, I don't even understand what you were saying. So I was like, this is my first time speaking in tongues, um, was at that young of an age. Mm-hmm. And I've had several encounters where God has just shown me time and time again just how real and powerful he actually is. Yeah. Um, 
the time when I wrecked and I should be dead, but I'm not. Um, there was another time on a missions trip where this man showed, this also involves witchcraft, but I didn't know it at the time. So we were, um, this is when Josh was youth pastor. Mm. We were in the Dominican Republic and we were having like this service on with this mountaintop village area. Yeah. And we had been warned that they practiced witchcraft. Now I'm not sure if it was like voodoo, Santeria, whatever, like Mm. it was, it wasn't good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we were going to go there, and we were going to preach the gospel. Mm-hmm. And we we were doing our thing, and this man shows up in a wheelchair, and he had had a, a motorcycle accident, like, I think a few months prior. Yeah. And he was paralyzed. So the leaders and some of the teens start praying for this man, and he walks home. Oh, that's beautiful. Like, if that if that's not an encounter, like... Yeah. I, and, and then there was... Um, there's just been so many times that he's just even just giving me peace mm. in a very hard time. Yeah. Like I'll consider that an encounter. Yeah. Um to be a little vulnerable and to share a little bit of mine and Sarah's story. Yeah. Um when we met, we met in twenty eighteen, at like the tail end of twenty eighteen. Mm. Um and then at the beginning of 2019, um, she got pregnant by like March. Mm. So like three, four months in to knowing each other. Yeah. If that doesn't tell you what our relationship was like. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then in August, we lost the baby. Mm. She was stillborn. Um, and and that was, you know, the, the psychic lady had told us we were meant to be together, like we were perfect for each other. And then this happens and... You know, I'm asking myself, like, God, where are you? Like, where are you? In so this? this was the moment where you actually like turned from witchcraft. Yeah, this into, is where like, I, God, I, I need you. This is where I gave it all up. Like, oh, I let him wow. have. I let him have it all. Wow. Um, and like, I'm, I'm like, God, where are you in this? Yeah. And dude, the peace that I felt. Oh, that's because beautiful. I knew where that child was. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I, I knew that there was a way through this. Mm. Even if I couldn't see what the other side was, mm-hmm. I had the peace to know that there was another side. Yeah. Like there was there was something on the other end of this. Yeah. And it was probably shortly after that that uh I'd actually texted Pastor Josh and told him I want to come home. Mm. Like I, I want to come home. Yeah. Um and there was one day where Sarah and I were driving home after we had we lost the baby and um we went to go see her sister and she didn't tell me but she went to go see the psychic again she didn't tell me because she knew that i would not be a fan of this yeah and that psychic had told her that we were no longer supposed to be together <sighs> so when i was in the darkness we were perfect yeah as i'm out. turning from the darkness <sighs> and coming yes, back to god now I'm not supposed to be with her. Yeah. You know what I mean? So did that cause any, like, doubts between you guys? No. I simply looked at her and said, I refuse to believe that. I rebuke that in yeah. Jesus' name. And I was like, when we get home... You're going to make me shout. You better stop it. <laughs> Go ahead. I was like, when we get home, we're praying together. And oh, yes, like, man. And I, I, had, I gave my life back to God for the umpteenth time. Wow. And... I walked her through the sinner's prayer. Oh, oh my gosh, man. And it I'm going to cry. It Good was right Lord. there in our living room. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. Dude, wow. And so from that point forward, were you guys like totally sold out? Yeah, but oh, she was tormented. I, without a doubt, man. The things, yeah. that, the things that were coming off of me. Yeah. And most people will tell you when they leave witchcraft, there's attacks afterwards. Yeah. Because those things are angry. Yeah. They weren't attacking yeah. me. And y'all were deep in it, too. Yeah. So, yeah. They weren't attacking me. They weren't torturing me mm. because they knew they couldn't. I was now aware of my identity in Christ. Yeah. Oh, wow. They were attacking her. Wow. They were torn. Like, she would come to me and be like, I'm seeing demons in the curtains. Yeah. Because they were, they were tormenting her now because she is just... This little baby Christian that just gave her life back to God for gave her life to God for the first time, mm-hmm. 
you know, she, she doesn't know, you know, there's, there's still things that, and not to talk down about her no, no. because dude, she, she supports me a lot of times, yeah, you know, yeah. like she, she encourages me and, and, you know, like, well, babe, the Bible says this and I'm yeah, like, yeah. you're right. But she didn't know a lot of things at that time. Mm-hmm. So they were able to, to pick and prod and she looked at me one day and she's like, Travis, we have to go back to church or I'm going to die. Wow. Yeah. And I was like, church is this Sunday. Like, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So she like was legitimately like certain that she was like that deep into the torment that, dude, I, I love that from that moment on, y'all were totally sold out to Jesus. And I mean, knew we had that. We had struggles. Like we had. Yeah. I didn't get back into the witchcraft thing, but there was definitely a spirit of compromise about the both of us for a, a long time. Absolutely. I uh, I used to be under the the thought of, well, you know, in Genesis it says God gave us every seed bearing plant, mm. so I can smoke pot and oh, be a Christian. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like that was, you know what I mean. And it, and it wasn't until, I mean, it's probably been a year, mm. going on close to a year where God was just walking us through this season of surrender. Mm -hmm. And he's like, Travis, put it down. Fine. Um, There was one day where Sarah had called me, and she was just listening to worship music, and there would be days where, like, she could not get out of the chair. Mm -hmm. But she would just sit there and and let the presence soak in the house. Like, she would play worship music all day and just sit there and soak in it. Yeah. And she kept hearing, throw them away. Because we had we both used vapes at the time. Wow! And she kept hearing throw them all away, and she's like, "What do you mean all of them? Like I only have the one." Mm-hmm. And he's like, "Throw them all away." So she goes digging through stuff and finds like six or seven of them, and then she hears again throw them all away. So she threw them away, and she's like, "Lord, if this is you, I'm not gonna have any headaches. I'm not gonna have any withdrawals. Yeah, like I'm gonna be fine." And we've been fine for going on close <laughs> to a year. So she calls me and wow. tells me this. And meanwhile, I'm on my break at work, so I'm, like, literally in the middle of, like, smoking my vape, and she tells me this, and I'm like, I just bought this thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, we need to throw them away, and I'm like, all right, fine. Jeez. And I get home, and I, like, I still had a, a, a bag of weed at the house. Yeah. So I get home, and I just throw all of it away. And I'm like, if we're, if he said get rid of everything, throw it all away, then I'm throwing it all Gosh, away. Gosh, man. And even then after that, it was like, God telling me, you know, I want you to lay this down. Mm -hmm. And I would argue with him about it, which I wouldn't advise arguing with God about things. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But I'd be like, you know, it's not that, like, it's not bad. It doesn't cause me to sin, right? Like, it doesn't bring up anything. So why? Yeah. Were you going to listen to me or you want to argue about it? I'm like, all right, God, I'll listen. (laughs) (laughs) Dude, I had, uh, I'm going to play this other clip here in a Mm -hmm. second, but I had this moment because the lord absolutely like i wasn't arguing with him but he'll rebuke you man and he he will because and and it's not because he's like you know some god up there with a staff that's trying to like you know squish you under under his feet or something that's not the that's not the thing it's to it's out of love it's to mm-hmm. grow you and to protect you mm-hmm. and there was this moment uh, i want to say that it's been like a year or two years ago where the lord like rebuked me out of nowhere and it was at like the highlight of my life man because i was like on fire and um still am of course but i you know just you know what i mean like just totally like you know nothing but speaking in tongues you know that strong yeah. pentecostal you yeah. know and then it was in the middle of it man that he rebuked me for something that i'd said and it crushed me for days man so yeah arguing with the lord don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Yeah, but I want to play this other clip, and then I, I, I'm going to play. I'm not going to give you any context. I'm just going to play it, and okay. then afterwards, I'll explain what's happening uh, for the people that are listening and stuff. But, dude, you're going to love it. Lord's just beginning to disband and displace demonic strongholds. Sir, with the, I think it's no, you come. I didn't even realize what he said at first. Stretch your hands out toward her brother. Father, thank you for the ministry that you've given him. 
for the ministry that you've given him. Not by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit of God. We call you forth tonight into the ministry God has given you to preach the gospel, to move in power. No religion. No religion. The Lord says you're going to preach the foolishness of the cross that will confound the wise. You have a ministry to the intellect. You're going to have a ministry on college campuses. I see you preaching the gospel to young adults. A friend of sinners you will be known as. See God putting a sickle in your hand. Lord says over your life, I am Lord of the harvest. You are a laborer. I am sending into my harvest fields. On the count of three, fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit will come upon you for the working of miracles, for the demonstration of power. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, touch him. One, two, three. More, Lord. More, Lord. There it is. More, Lord. Fire. Fire of the Holy Spirit, come. Fire of the Holy Spirit, come. Power from on high. touching you, He's healing you, He's giving you confidence and boldness. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you. <laughs> Good. So, so that was me. In, but... <laughs> so for the people that are listening, um, no, I'll save that part for here in a minute. So to give some context, uh, Jeremiah Johnson was here in, I think it was July um, so. of last year. Uh, he was here, and it was uh, he had already preached, and he was prophesying over, um, over several people, and he ended up coming to Travis and prophesying over him. But the thing that he said at the beginning, because I went back and watched, man, and I was like, whoa, because he was walking your way, and he said something like, the Lord is breaking demonic strongholds or something like that. Mm. And then he went directly to you. Um, but man, what was you feeling in that moment? So, I, <laughs> cause that whole day was just the thing. Okay. Um, cause I was still in this place where, yes, I believed God, but I was skeptical of certain people with big ministries and mm, okay. to be blunt about it. He was one of them. Oh wow! So okay. I'm I'm in the shower getting ready, and I'm like, God, if he's if he's really your guy, yeah, he's gonna point me out tonight, dude. That's and then as insane. soon as he like walks over my way, like I can f- like oh. I just start like shaking. I didn't even notice that he said the whole part about breaking demonic strongholds. Mm-hmm. But if he said that and is walking towards me, that's why I immediately started like shaking. Um, and I'm like, he'll if. If he's if he's your guy, like he's gonna he's gonna point me out. Yeah. And he did. And I'm like, all right. Like all right. Um But yeah, I just, so as he was like speaking, prophesying over me, yeah. The the thing that was going through my head is like why? How? Like yeah, yeah. you after everything, why? Like me of all people, like are you sure? And so, like, yes, I was receiving it, but, again, I was still being skeptical. Mm-hmm. And I can remember, God, are you sure you believe in me? Like, are you sure I can Dude, do this? Dude, I was wondering. Okay, so to give some context before he says this, for the people that are listening um, and not watching, if you're watching, you know exactly what happened. But if you're listening, so when Jeremiah Johnson came over, he prophesies over him, and there's a gap where he says nothing. And then he says, I believe in you three times. 
and then Travis just, you know, kind of collapses, collapses, man. Yeah. And, uh, under the, un, under the glory of the Lord. So you were in your mind was thinking, Lord, do you believe in me? Yeah. Are you sure I can do this? Oh my gosh. Yeah. And, he, and not only this is a reach, I don't know if this was purposeful or not, but I do believe it's prophetic that he said it three times. It's almost like each part of the Trinity was all saying in <sighs> unity, I believe in you. Yeah. Yeah. That. Wow. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's nuts, man. Because it was like in that moment, because I was, I was fighting going down. You know what I mean? Like I'm still trying to stand in yeah. my own strength. Yeah. Um, and as soon as he said it, it's like the all of the weight just came down. And yeah. I, I could not stand anymore. Uh, man, I remember being on the keys because I was playing keys mm-hmm. for that service. So uh, we was playing the, the the melody, Here Comes the Glory of the Lord, sweeping in the room. And I remember just kind of like trying to keep the band and, you know, a pocket on that. But I remember looking over and seeing you and I was like, man. Um, this is when Jeremiah was actually prophesying over you. And I was like, man, the Lord's really ministering there. But now that I know the whole story and the context of it, dude, that like, <laughs> that prophecy is insane, yeah, man. Cause yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't long after that, um, that they ended up asking you for, uh, to cover the youth. Was it? Was this January? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it was, you know, there's a gap in between July until there um, to just kind of, you know, pick your brain a little bit. Between that prophecy and then you being asked, like, what was happening? Was the Lord ministering to you a lot or was it? Yeah, I was being used a lot because it, I mean, I still work at, at Food Line. Like, I still work at a grocery store. Yeah. Um, there's some college-age kids that work at that grocery store. Hmm. Uh, young adults. Ministry on college campuses. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So like I'm, and they're coming with coming at me with all these questions. Like I can remember, um, one kid asked me. He's like, you know, my granddad was a devout Christian man, mm-hmm. and like he believed in God with everything he has. And like I grew up in church, and now I'm kind of questioning. Yeah, because of the way my granddad died. Mm-hmm. He's like, my granddad, all he asked for was to die at home in peace, mm. and he died in the hospital. And, you know, I'm like, God, how do I answer this question? And then very quickly I heard, if he was at home, he wouldn't be in peace. Mm. Because if he's at home, he's not going to have the doctors and the medications available and everything else. Like, So I'm like, you know, God gave him the peaceful death. Yes, it wasn't at home, but he let him go peacefully at the hospital. Yeah. And he was like, that makes a lot of sense. And, I mean, there's there's a couple others that I still talk with. Like, um, I think it was a couple Sunday nights ago. There's another guy that I work with, and um, he goes to, like, the the Christian functions at his college. Like, he's part of those different clubs and stuff. Yeah. And uh, he looks at me, and he's like, man, I like working with you, because every time we work together, like, I get youth pastored, and I love it. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, yeah, so it's, those things were happening, and I didn't even realize it. Like, Sarah brought it to my attention one night. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, I just don't feel like anything's happening. Like, all this stuff was said over me, and, like, nothing's <laughs> happening. And she's like, Travis, you're ministering to— Like, right now. Right now. Like, you're ministering to, <laughs> to kids awesome. that are in college, that yeah. are young adults. and Yeah. Wow. Wow. Gosh, man, that's uh, that's insane. Because uh, watching it, you know, from the outside, um, kind of looking in, I mean, that prophecy, man, is— it's going in order too. That's what's crazy. It's like back to back. I mean, just seeing you guys and what you're doing. So, um, yeah. So, what would you say to those that are currently dealing with witchcraft, like in it? What would you say to those people? I know you're looking for truth, mm. and I know where you can find the truth. Yeah. There's a reason why Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." Yeah. Like it's that's that's where my search started out is what is really true. Yeah. If like this stuff is real, it presents itself as true and real. Yeah. But what holds weight is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm. And I know you're looking for truth in some semblance of control. Yeah. But we as humans are not meant to have that control. Mm. Things start to go a lot smoother, and it's not always going to be smooth. It's not always going to be crystal clear and, and great. You know, there's going to be rough patches, 
But when you start to lay that trust in someone who has everything under control, mm-hmm. right? Like I've I've told the the kids in youth that it's like giving me a football. I'm terrible at football. Football is not worth much in my hands. <laughs> but if you put that football in the hands of, you know, I'm blanking on like a professional football yeah, player because I don't yeah, watch sports. I, I don't, I don't but if you so. put that football in the hands of a quarterback in the NFL, yeah. it is now worth millions. Mm. You know, if, if I have a basketball, it's not worth much. If LeBron James has a basketball, it's worth millions. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, control yes. in my hands is not worth much. Mm-hmm. But if I put that control in the hands of God, it's worth that's everything. That's beautiful. Wow. Yeah. Dude, that's powerful. That's going to be real. I'm going to use that as a real <laughs> for this, man. That's good. So uh, to f- kind of flip that question, mm-hmm. what would you say to the church about witchcraft? Don't deny how real it is. Yeah. Because by denying it, ignoring it, or just choosing not to believe it's real, you're putting a blindfold over your face in a fight. Mm. And it's not that your opponent no longer exists. It's that you don't see the hit coming. You're still going to get hit. You just don't know where it's coming from. Yeah. Like, it's it's not wrong to acknowledge that it's real. It doesn't mean you're glorifying it because you're, you're telling people about things that are real. I mean, what is it, Ephesians 6, 12, that says we fight against powers and, and principalities and yeah. rulers? That's a spiritual hierarchy that's in those verses. Mm -hmm. There are powers, there are principalities, Mm -hmm. and what some books refer to as thrones. What sits on a throne? A ruler. Yeah. Right? Like there's there are things in the spirit that we are up against. Mm -hmm. And if we don't acknowledge their existence, yeah. We're just hindering ourselves. Mm. Man. Um this is a subject for another time, but it is so important to have a prayer life, especially with situations as these, uh, because I think it hits. There are older people who are in witchcraft, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, there is, mm-hmm. there is, but the younger generation who is unknowledged in that, and um, they're going to be impacted hard, especially in you know. I think of you know my my nieces and my nephews who you know I think the oldest is five, five or six. And, you know, thinking he's going to have to go into school, man, and grow up and being as easily his mind being um, molded at a young age. um, It's important for us to pray over our children. Um, and a uh, shout out to CK, man, because they're tearing it up right now. Man. Yeah, they are. Kids laying hands on other kids, and they're yeah. being filled with the Spirit. So, you know, man, what a ministry. But for the people who uh, are unchurched, who have kids and stuff like that going into this, um, their minds can be easily molded, so it's important to pray discernment over our kids, but over us. Like, yeah. Lord, open our eyes, you know. Um, you, uh, you don't want someone in witchcraft to have a stronger prayer life than you do because they 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 do pray you know it's not that they again everything that that god has and god uses the enemy tries to to imitate yeah like don't think that what do you think all of their their little rituals and and spells and stuff their their prayers Mm. you don't want your enemy to have a stronger prayer life than you do Somebody just got rebuked i felt it (laughs) you better start praying you better you better get that prayer life Man, you got anything else? No, I'm just thankful that God brought me to where I am now. Yeah. Yeah. Man, powerful story. So what's your age range for, like, youth? I can't From remember From 12 to 18. 12 to 18. Yeah. So if you know anybody that's 12 to 18 or you're 12 and 18, uh, man, come out on a Wednesday night. Go yeah. up to the youth room, yeah. uh, Covenant Youth. Um, yeah, he's the man. So he'll he'll lead you guys. Um yeah, yeah. So twelve to eighteen. It's every Wednesday from at six thirty. From six thirty uh, to eight. Uh, yeah, six thirty yep. to eight. And Sundays, you guys kind of sit together too. So mm-hmm. uh, if you want to come on a Sunday, you don't got nowhere to sit. Travis is the guy to sit with. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Yeah. Thank you for being on this episode. Thanks for dude. inviting me, dude. Dude, this is. Uh, we're gonna have to bring Sarah in next time, man. I, I want to hear her side of the story too. I would kind of love to hear her side of the story too, because yeah. I I know bits and pieces. Yeah. 
Um, like her growing up, not really being in church and that kind of thing. But she's got her own story to tell. Yeah. Everybody has a story to tell. I'll tell you what. So we were debating on how long this episode were going to be. Was going to be um, if it was going to be split up into a part one and part two. Let's do a part two, but let's bring Sarah in on it. Okay. You think that would work? We'll have to. It might be a little tricky to work out, but I'm sure we can get it figured out. Hey, we can do it, man. I'm always open to another day of recording. Man. Yeah. So be on the lookout for that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys for joining us. Travis, thank you, man, for joining us. This has been awesome, dude. But thank you guys for joining us, listening, watching. Uh, we want you to share this with your friends and your family. Uh, get it out there. Get it to the people. If this is, um, once again, if you guys have a topic that you want to give us, hand it over, man. Put it in the comments. Yep. Uh, we want to hear from you guys. But thank you guys for joining us, and we'll see you next time on the Judah Goes First podcast. Thanks, guys.